All right, so I, I teach uh, private lessons to this uh, couple of kids. One is a middle school girl. She has a textbook she got from her uh, cram school. Yeah, a couple of kids. And it's, uh, th- these textbooks are not always high quality. I've noticed that uh, the cram school textbooks are sometimes produced uh, in-house, so to speak, by the cram school and uh, without a lot of uh, consultation from oh, foreigners. Oh, dear. Yeah. Now, this one actually had pretty solid English grammatically, um, but uh, I felt like the situation took a really serious turn in one particular uh, skit. So, Ray, if you could uh, be as kind as to read the dialogue for Miss Green, and I'll be Tomoko. All right. Uh, All right. Of course. Okay. Here, Here we, we go. go. Hello, Miss Green. Hello, Tomoko. Oh, you have diapers. Why do you need them? Last month, my sister had a baby. Oh, that's nice. Is the baby a boy or a girl? It is a boy, and his name is Tadashi. What does the name Tadashi mean? Tadashi means right in English. His parents hope that he will do the right thing. That's a nice name. Are your parents happy too? And scene. Okay. Uh, I just, I love that line because I imagine the baby like... Uh, sitting at the kitchen table with his head in his hands, mulling over a really important decision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, his parents hope that he will do the right thing. Faced with a, What kind of a choice would a baby be faced with where he would have to do the right thing? Oh, gosh, yeah, I don't even know whether or not to poop my pants, I guess. Right, moral, moral quandaries. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, God, it's bubbling up, but I've got <laughs> two, two main options here. I, I should get just, someone, but I'm really into this rattle right now. I can do it right in the diaper, or I can figure out how to walk to the toilet. <laughs> oh, man. Survival <laughs> think, Ray, <shit>. think. <laughs> yeah, you know, something like that. Is it possible he was embroiled in the civil rights movement? <laughs> Perhaps, or right? maybe just a civil rights issue. Okay. Like, uh, let's imagine baby, Baby's right. Yeah, let's imagine the baby is a mayor of a town and they're trying to vote on uh, gay marriage or something like that. You know? Sure, baby town. And it's a very uh, conservative town, traditionally. So the mayor, you know, wants to have a progressive view because he's a newborn. So, you know, maybe things you know, can get a bit uh, stressful. Uh, yeah, may- uh, maybe it's a predominantly pro-family town. Yes, <laughs> And the baby, as a new part of a family, sort of feels an obligation to, uh, you know, lean towards the side of the family in general. Because, uh, you know, let's assume also that the baby was born, you know, from as, as a traditional, through a traditional heterosexual couple. You know, it right. wasn't given up for adoption or anything like that. Would it complicate things if he was elected on a mostly pro-poopy platform? Well, I don't know about that. That's a tricky platform. Because also, you know, you don't have a lot of infant voters to really support that sort of vote. And, you know, as people get older, they don't like poop as much or really, you know, tend to, uh, you know, go in their clothes and then, you know, just sort of stew in it, you know, for, you know, up to an hour a day, let's say. So that that also be pretty tricky. Um, I can understand, you know, sort of wallowing in doubt about that for sure. But, you know, once again, you got to do the right thing. Alex want uppies. <laughs> yeah. Perfect chance for you to do that baby noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> Show's back to normal. Gentlemen, welcome to No More Whoppers. My name is Ray Barnhold, Pumper Nickel, Pump Faker. I, I, I don't know, but, but uh, with me as always, the proprietor of Pilates and Pierogies on West Fifty Fifth, Alex Frioli. Folks, come on down to P and P for a stretch and a sandwich. <laughs> pierogi, pierogi sandwich. I know pierogi is not uh, strictly a sandwich, but uh, it is a delicious potato-based dumpling, and uh, give it a try. And that's just the sampling of the fantastic improv you're going to see from us more on the show today. Um, Line. Right. I'm Alex. <laughs> oh, that's right. Hi, folks. Uh, Alex, just let me ask you at the top of the show, how's everything? You feeling good? You good. Healthy? Great. I'm, uh, it's great to be back. Thank you for having me back. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's people always have, a treat. People, 
people have been clamoring for me. Alex. Yep. Alex. 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 That's all. Sit down. Alex. Please. Alex. Alex. All right. Our studio audience knew for this uh, show. <laughs> yeah. Our, this season of the show. It's episode 40. Can you believe it? Yeah. Oh, man. And that is also the uh, number of degrees it is outside. It is the coldest day of the year so far where I'm from. And uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't pretty. See, I'm, also, I'm 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 um, I got I'm on, I got Celsius on the brain now. You said forty, and I I thought, fuck, that's really hot. I know, right? Well, sorry, yeah. this is uh, I'm I'm from America, and you know. Well, so am I. We have uh, real easy to understand temperatures. Okay, when you have zero degrees, it's easier to understand than Fahrenheit and Celsius. Wait, aren't isn't aren't zeros both the same for both? No, I don't think so. Are they? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't no, know. No, wait. I'm also educated in America, so. Let me look it up. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is... Wait. <laughs> Hang on. Guy who doesn't understand <laughs> anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> does this have to be solved now? Yes, hold on. I was going to keep talking, you know. We have a well, show fine. to do. I'll- I'll just chime in when I get the answer. Folks, I, I didn't really pay attention in science class. Oh, I can just check Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm Alex. <clears throat> yes, it's been quite chilly, and today wasn't as great for me either, because it was also raining, and then I had to go out t- uh, to lunch. No, I was right. 32 degrees that. Fahrenheit is zero degrees Celsius. All right. I mean, I was wrong before, but then yes. I was right when I tried to correct yeah. myself. So, in a way, now, I was Now, the boiling right point the of beginning. water is 100 degrees Celsius, which actually comes out to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, if, in case you're boiling anything over the holidays. We. Oui. I don't know how cold it's been for you, Alex. Pretty cold. It's Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, you know what? Let's talk Canadian Imperial units. All right. Well, those are pretty old, though, aren't they? Yeah. Because like, they adopted metric, so. I, I just listened to a podcast about the metric system today. Oh yeah, was it? Uh, yes. Was it one of them uh, hosted by Paul F. Tompkins? Is that why what? you listen no. to it? I fucking hate you. You love your Paul F. Tompkins. What did I just fucking rant at you about on tw- on on a message the other day? Don't don't pigeonhole me. Guess my shit. <laughs> oh yeah, like you never do with me. It was a podcast Even. called Stuff You Should Know. It's educational. I don't just listen to pod- comedy. Comedy. <laughs> 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 the point is, uh, I hate you. Why did he call a show that? Paul F. Tompkins pod me. Comedy. I like Pod F. Tomcast. Yeah. Folks, if you haven't heard the recent live uh, Pod F. Tomcast, you really should. <laughs> All right, thank it's you. It's totally Alex. funny. All right. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, Kelvin. Right. Uh, that's a good name, you know, just for somebody. And it reminds yeah. me. Well, I'm pretty sure it was named after a person. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> All these made up words for things. Who knows anymore? Uh, but that actually reminds uh, oh, me of, of, of an observation um, that came up to me in the past couple of weeks. <laughs> you were just sitting in the park and it came right up to you. Excuse <laughs> me, sir. Uh, speaking of um, things I might yell at you later. Don't, don't <laughs> Get back in the car. I yeah. I said no onions. Uh-huh. <laughs> I sort of think you're mistaken I somehow. was reminded of something, the fact that, um, you know, I'm kind of a mumble mouth. And so whenever well, I say well, my name, it comes out that? as something else sometimes. I can't quite and, make uh, out in the past, what you're saying. Uh, a couple of weeks, two times, in fact, people thought my name was Gray. Oh, wow. When I said it, when I introduced myself. The first venue was uh, a loud restaurant, so that makes sort of sense. But the second time was on the phone with a you know customer service person. And uh, yeah, both of them thought it was Gray. Uh, the second time with, on customer service, I didn't really get a chance to correct them. Um, it didn't really matter anyway, because it was not related to the issue. But, <laughs> yeah, I've also been Greg at least twice. Um, once when uh, some uh, Jehovah's Witnesses came to the door, and then I mumbled my name out, and she thought I was Greg. And then second at Starbucks when they wrote Greg on my Starbucks cup. So I think it might not just be, I don't know if it's necessarily low volume or mumbling. It might just be saying it too fast. I, I, I've been trying, I've been trying, man. You know, I try and be as loud as I can and enunciate as well as I can. But it just mm. doesn't. Uh, it might backfire way. if you try to enunciate Ray and you make that initial R sound, Ray. Because then it could right. kind of put a hard G sound in the front if the person hears it right. 
or yeah, that's wrong. The, that's the double-edged sword, I think, is, is the problem. So, like Darth Maul had, is that right? Right. Played okay. by Ray Park. Hey, Greg Park, I love that guy. <laughs> uh, and my favorite actor, Ray Kinnear. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, another thing I love about the Star Wars movies is all those Greg guns. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just just sci-fi in general, full of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> that was just an observation I made and uh I don't know. I don't know how to solve it because, you know, I have my basic uh, speech, uh, I guess it's an imp- impediment, but I have my sp- basic speech pattern. And again, like I said, I try and be a little bit louder and a little bit more clearer, but it doesn't Wait. work. Hold up, Greg. Think, you know, this was <laughs> solved already by Elaine Bennis. Uh, name tags. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> Just wear a name tag. Hello, my name is Ray. Uh-huh. Um... Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I got it. okay. Well, no, no. You want to look professional? Maybe a name tag is embarrassing. You just wear a lanyard all the time. It looks like you're on a lunch break from a convention or something. <laughs> yes, or right. <laughs> yes. You know, just make up a fake. You know, scroll convention of video game appreciation. How about how about I go the full ten yards here and see what? And then make a name card, and then also wear scrubs, and then pretend. Oh I'm yeah. A doctor. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. I bet you get a lot of free stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like what? <laughs> Lungs, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Needles, you know, just stuff. <laughs> a couple of bits of gauze, who knows, you know? People think you might need that. <laughs> right. So, yeah, Alex, I, you know, I bring it up also because, Alex, I don't think you ever have that problem. Uh, I do sometimes. Uh, in, in Japan, if people mistake my name, it's usually either Alec or Eric's. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes and sense. For some reason, the Eric's thing happened a lot when I first moved here, and I could not figure out why. Because, like, Eric's, I don't think that's, like, a name. No. That's... I don't know anybody named Eric's. And then I, I Googled <laughs> it, and it turns out there's a, there's a burger chain called Eric's, a Japanese oh, burger chain. Yeah, okay. Well. So I was like, oh, oh, yeah, that must be a real name then. Okay. Right, yeah. Does it have an apostrophe? Do you remember? Or I uh, I don't recall. Okay. And then Dang. Alec, I can kind of see. You know what? That one's not so bad. I like Alec Baldwin. Yeah, and you know what's funny about that is that you know the game Alex Kid in Katakana they spell it as Alec. Interesting. It's really stupid. <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> they, they do? No, the... they don't. I've seen it a lot of times as Alec. Yeah. Oh, a lot of times. I think I meant every time. Because I know I, I've definitely seen it as Alex. Nine out of ten, let's say. <laughs> Just to I watched a, a YouTube. Sound I watched a YouTube. Button. I actually pulled one of my drops from a YouTube video of a Japanese kid playing the game, and he was narrating <laughs> it, and he kept saying Alex, Alex. Right. Well, I think eventually they sort of we all learned how to do it correctly, but I think uh, oh, oh, at okay. the time, I don't know. Like if you see the original box, it'll say Alex. Interesting. Even though it, it's in also in English as Alex, so. Alex. 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 All right. Well, this has been our new segment, Nom de Plume. Nom de Whoppers. Let's let's hear from the Frankenstein Studio audience. Alex. No. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Or just dullards. Uh, yeah, I got to make a um, a correction here. I think last episode, or two episodes really, because we record these a week in advance, mm-hmm. uh, I mistakenly said my sister lived in Detroit when I meant Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And she she was pretty pissed off. She got on iMessage and, you know, just all in caps, I don't live in Detroit, you fuckwad! <laughs> fuckwad was added by me, but you get the idea. But Shut the fuck up! Yeah. Well, you know, when you did say it, I, it did sound odd to me because I did know that your sister was in Chicago, but I, I yeah, because I've mentioned it countless times. I and the the worst part is it is that she was like, you know, it's not that hard to remember where people live. It's all on Facebook, <laughs> and like, I know, no, I fucking know where you live. I didn't really think Listen. you lived in Detroit. I just I conflate the two cities for two reasons. One, um, my friend Brad lives in Detroit. He's based out of Detroit. Like the only two people I know in the Midwest are Brad in Detroit and Lily in Chicago. And two, every time I fly home, I transfer at either Chicago or Detroit airport. They're basically sure. the same city in sure. my mind. All right. right. 
listen, I'm going to stick by you here. I'm going to, you know, cover your ass here a bit because I think uh, that's a pretty normal thing to confuse Chicago and Detroit. Okay, both, well, thank you. Well, but, but I do, I did feel bad about it. I apologize to my sister and I hope, uh, I hope things are working out for her in Kansas City. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're both very gray cities for one yes. thing. You know, they're very, uh, you mean they were, large. Um, one is more sparse than the other. What? They, they were Confederate cities is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, did she really get as offended as it sounds? I, I, well, I, I don't think crap? she was, I don't think, yeah, I, th- I think she was just uh, giving me okay. crap. That's good. <laughs> as all sisters should. Yes. All right. So, <laughs> uh, is that your one correction of the week? Just checking. Um, that's about it, I think. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't got anything else really. Uh, you know, there's that other Seven Eleven hearing coming up, but I'm really not going to go. So. Oh come on. There's really no point anymore. The place is Your open. Your country needs you. <laughs> but I. Uh, but okay. <laughs> if you say so. I do. I'll go sit and waste another evening, just observing stuff. For what? Absolutely nothing. I know. I really think this time you should try to turn it into some kind of a performance. Like bring, bring uh, a hilarious trigger happy TV size big gulp. No. You know, just walk in. I, I'd really rather not, Alex. I don't. Wanna... And then make it ring, and then answer it with "Hello." Right. I know. I know what you mean. I'm at a council meeting. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I said a council meeting. Okay. I, I was quite happy uh, this past week because Tuesday and Wednesday I got to go home early. Fa- oh yeah, fantastic. Uh, par- parent-teacher conferences. It was great. Yeah, and they don't need you for any of those? No, no, because I'm not a homeroom teacher. Oh, okay. I mean, this is, you know, this is for the parents to ask about uh, all areas of their kids' performance. Yeah, but... And English isn't even but, really graded. Uh, not that anything is, really, but English, you know, there's no, there's no English testing until middle school. Of course, all of this was preceded uh, on the Tuesday, the first day that I got to go home early, by... The vice principal coming around to my desk and being like, uh, Alex, there's student, te- there's a student, or no, there's parent teacher conferences. And I'm like, yeah, I know it says so on my schedule. And he's just, he just kind of stands there. Like, I think he's expecting me to say, can I go home now? But like, I, like the company specifically says, don't do that. So I didn't. And he just keeps standing there looking at my schedule and I'm looking at my schedule. I'm, I'm pointing. There's, there's even my company even wrote a little note at the bottom of the schedule that says, yeah. Students are leaving school early. Le- all school, all the students are leaving school at one thirty because of parent-teacher conferences. It, but that's all it says. It doesn't say so you can go home. Yeah. Do you think also maybe he just expects you to say no? I didn't know that. Thank you. <sighs> well, I'm no, the- it was written on my schedule on, on both know, schedules: the schedule from the school and the schedule from the company. Hey, side rant. Why the fuck do I have to have two schedules that say almost the same thing? And in the cases where they don't say the same thing, which one of them is right? I got to take them both up to the principal's desk and say, uh, "Excuse me, somebody fucked up." Well, usually right is right, so just do the one that's in your right hand. Oh my god, that's good. Yeah. Also, a uh, lefty Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Remember. <laughs> so you got off early. That is that sounds great. It's fantastic. I went home. Um, I was home at two p.m. Uh, just felt great. Felt like I was doing something wrong. Felt like I should have closed my blinds, you know. <laughs> felt a little naughty. It, yeah, it was great though. I got to I got to um, put some extra work into Ten and Ten, uh, which mm-hmm. is all done by the way. I finished recording every episode of Ten and Ten for this year. That's right. And tell us again and what the special treatment was. That's right. Well, actually, um, by the time folks hear this, it will already be it'll be almost done. There'll only well, be know, uh, two or three episodes left. We don't exist in a vacuum here. People may uh, be listening to this in the future. That's right. Um, starting on December 17th or 18th, uh, 10 and 10 is turning into an advent calendar of sorts. It goes from 10 and 10 to 9 and 9 to 8 and 8, all the way down to 1 and 1 on Christmas Day. Now, yes. I had to sort of uh, tweak the release times because I had been releasing at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Which is a little late for Christmas morning, so um, each yeah. episode is also going to release one hour earlier than the previous episode, so the Christmas episode will drop on 7 a.m. Christmas morning, Pacific Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. Oh, man. So get up early and rush to the tree and uh, get up. Oh, well, not plug in early. your iPad. And <laughs> yeah, make, yeah, good point. Thank you. Make sure your tree has Wi-Fi. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, you're out of luck. <laughs> and can sync podcasts over the cloud. Tree-fi. 
Uh, somebody's got to make that, right? <laughs> Somebody must have already <clears throat> a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi tree enabled tree. That yeah, maybe you can yeah, check yeah. on, you know, its temperature. No, no. You something. know what? There's definitely there's got to be like tech dudes who have made Christmas lights that they control from their computer. You know, it has happened. Well, yes, it has happened. Yeah. Like tree lights, you know, they're at the computer. They're, mm, I quite prefer the green over the purple. Beep. Yeah. Do you remember like old uh, like webcams where you could like uh, send a command yeah. to something or other and it would change whatever the camera there was? There was one at. when I, I was know, in college, like my first year of college, um, t- September 2001. <laughs> some stuff happened around that time. <laughs> um, there was this thing online. I think it was like a mall somewhere and a camera and you can click on the lights and the lights will turn on or off. Do you remember that? I don't remember it, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That was neat. Yeah. And completely useless. <laughs> I'm sure it's still around in some form because now it must be, you know, a lot easier to handle. I hear they're doing wonderful things with drones. Yeah. What if I made like a Lego Mindstorms sort of Alex figure and then we could have a webcam set up and every time you push the inner button or whatever, it says, you know, I'm Alex. I'm Alex. We would be dead in min- Oh, it doesn't move? <laughs> I Sure, why not? Okay, well, then we'd be dead in minutes, I think. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean, exactly? It means people would take control of it and just kill us with it. Oh, okay. Or Fair just enough. Me. No. <laughs> that way, technically, it could be ruled a suicide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they haven't... Did, is there a word for uh, when your clone kills you? Um, or some sort of uh, other construct made to resemble you kills you? Doppelgangbanged? I know that's uh Is it no? That's a that's a DVD you buy on the No more Wapple Gangers. <laughs> that was the browser scene. Okay. Uh, you know, before we recorded, I got a I got a call from the an NHK lady. Oh, 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 really? Yeah. Yeah. Man. I was listening listening to a podcast. Stuff you should know, by the way, asshole. Right. Um not a comedy podcast. Uh and <laughs> I, you know, I, I always, I get that sinking feeling when I hear, you know, when you hear the volume of the podcast or your music slowly yeah. drop down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you know somebody's calling you. It's like, fuck, I don't want to talk to anybody. Oh, yeah. And that happens. And I pick up the phone and it's this nice lady from the NHK. And she's like, oh, hi, the guy came around the other day, didn't he? Thanks right. for paying. Anyway, if you give me your credit card info, it'll be a lot easier in the future. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have a credit card. Yeah. She's like, okay, goodbye. All right, then. And that was that, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was nice, I guess. Yeah, she was but, very kind. She was very polite. Right. You know what? I think they would actually collect a lot more if they did send uh, women door-to-door instead of the guys. I suppose. That sounds no? sexist. Well, yeah, but it's, you know, it's the female powers of persuasion. I saw Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened in Wolverine? Oh, it's his his girlfriend's powers. She can persuade people by touching them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that doesn't always work, you know, especially if you are also a woman. Like, I don't think. Okay, uh, that's true. A straight woman, I don't think, necessarily. Although I will give you the fact that, you know, yes, the presence of a woman, you know, also usually a kinder voice as well. I mean, that's just sort of. Usually, you know, Yeah. I, th- I think I, I much prefer dealing with women in Japan than men, because women tend to be more polite. Yeah. Well, what about women in America? Uh, it's a gamble. Like a doctor, for instance. The eternal <laughs> question. Would you rather have a male doctor or a women doctor? Or I was actually talking to a friend of the show, Matt, about this over a message this morning. Uh, I had a bad experience with a female dentist in America. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that's indicative of all female dentists or no. practitioners of any kind, but I got this work done in Pittsburgh uh, by this uh, f- um, she dentist and then uh, <laughs> went up to New Jersey for vacation some months later, went to the dentist and the guy's like, what the fuck happened? Who did this work? It's awful. He had to redo most of it. Now, maybe he was just taking advantage of the insurance and charging me for nothing. And by me, I mean my parents. <laughs> Could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, was she older, let's say? Was she... No, I don't know. I think, you know, uh, know, 30s, 30s, 40s. I see. Huh. Well, that's too bad. But no, I I don't... um, I've had visits to female doctors before that were perfectly fine. One of them examined weird growths in my body. (laughs) 
Yes. Such um, as? No, I'm kidding. I got lumps. <laughs> a series of lumps. Yeah. Just, just all over. Yeah. Obs. I, God, I am I'm optometrist. I almost said obstetrician. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't remember what that is. Uh, okay, good. Optometrist, sir, sir, my friend Brad's mother worked at an eyeglass shop. <laughs> it's right. not a doctor, but <laughs> she did sell me some wonderful frames. Right, yeah, it's a, it's a person who's sort of in charge of the whole thing. And <laughs> I, I feel like we're offending people with this discussion. Not yet. I think we're skirting the line still. But, uh, you know, it's just a question. I mean, if you're... Not that we're insecure, but there are, you know, the t- t- typical insecure dudes let's say who don't want a woman doctor or whatever can we find some uh, some women yes <laughs> and then there's that <laughs> all right well maybe we should take a break yes that's a good idea um i've got to hit the water closet okay we'll bring up bring us back some water i will uh I'd like a do you have any tartan tartan water i'd like some maybe I, houndstooth as well i, I have a good houndstooth water I got Britta. We're back. It's no more whoppers. Oh yeah. I don't care. How many times have I said that now? Jeez. <laughs> At least forty. Okay, Alex, how's it going? Gabagool. Good. I'm fine. You're right. <laughs> what else oh, has been yeah. going on in your well, life? Yesterday, I had a dental follow-up. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You remember the last last time I went? There was uh, no anesthetic. And yes, I it was, got a little gruesome, and I didn't. It got a little much gruesome. In my mind, I was screaming, butcher, you fucking butcher. Yeah. Um, this time, no anesthetic, mm-hmm. and yet completely painless. I don't know oh. how he did it. I wish he had done this, uh, whatever he did last time, but uh, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, good. And there was, there was drilling and scraping and poking and prodding, and it was great. I don't know, I don't know how he did that. Maybe uh, you just got used to it. No, that's not it. I was nervous <laughs> and sweating, and he's like, relax. And so I did a little bit. Well, maybe that tuned you out. I don't know. Who, may, we may never know. Uh, but it, that sounds good. Or is is that the last procedure? No, I got to go back on the sixth. Oh, brother! I really hope that's the last one, though. But uh, wait, after January every sixth? Yeah. Is that is after that every? Okay? After every trip, he puts a temporary cap on the tooth with some yeah. kind of a I don't know some kind of a dental cement or something. Yeah. Magic and I can't serum. Ch- and I can't chew. Delicious. And I can't chew on that side for the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, but then the next day I can. And it's, it, it's really amazing. Because it, 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 it feels yeah. fine when I chew on it. I just, and in my mind I'm thinking, well, Jesus, why don't I just stick with this all the time? But I'm guessing it's sort of, it breaks down over time. Yeah, probably. But, uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and I, I, I said I was... Um, Maybe it breaks down quicker than I thought, because I, I asked him... No, he asked me, he said, when are you leaving for vacation? I said, the 18th, I'm getting back on the on the 1st, my next appointment, I'd like to be on the 6th, and he's like, oh, really? And then when he put the cap on, he made it slightly bigger than the previous one. So I'm thinking he's being cautious. Yeah, all right then. There's a little bit of extra cement in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. It and delicious. Is. Oh, bubblegum. All right, well, we wish it the best as we, all, as we do all teeth. Uh, Gabba girl. Good to hear. I'm feeling fine, actually. I feel great. Um, I, I actually, I also paid my electric bill late. Mm-hmm. Late? And, you know, yeah, sometimes, like, if I'm late paying my water bill and I show up at the post office, I'm like, oh, guys, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's tough to get here because I have a job, you know, and you guys close at four every day and you're not open on the weekends. Right. I give it to them late and they're like, hey, no problem. And I just pay it. Mm-hmm. And But if I show up with my electric bill... At the convenience store, who's just open 24 hours? Well, wait, that's, hang on. Um, you know, sometimes I do forget. I got a lot of things going on. You know, 10 and 10 doesn't record itself. And I, no. I can't make it to the convenience store. And, uh, I, like, I, I was late paying my electric bill by a day. 
It was due on the 17th. Right. I No. It was due on the 7th. I brought it on the 8th. And the guy scans it, and the computer's all beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then what? And he what? goes, well, I'm sorry, sir. This is date of the 7th. You're going to have to wait for the electric company to send you a new one. I'm like, all right, oh, fine. Okay. Lovely. But, like, I leave soon for vacation. Yeah. So as each as each day passed, I'm I'm like, oh, crap. What if it doesn't get here before I leave, and I come back from vacation, and my power shut off? <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, it showed up yesterday, so I paid it. Oh, well, thanks for leaving me hanging on the edge of my seat there. I'm sorry. Jeez. Next time, just tell the whole story. Alex. I was Alex. getting palpitations. What? How about a little consideration for your friend, okay? <sighs> Next time you tell uh, oh, stories fuck. like that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love when you say all right like that. <laughs> just like... It's like you're genuinely agreeing with me. Like, oh, fine. God. <laughs> sure. We. No. That was cool. Wait, let's do both those at the same time. Hang on. Gabagool. We. Gabagool. All right. All right. That's, that's, all, that's all for Al events. Yeah. I like that other all right, too. Uh, well, I can say some stuff about me. Extra stuff. How about that? Good. Please do. Introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, Let me restate that. My, my name is Ray. I sort of think you are mistaken somehow. Okay, and um, I mean, what are you I anticipating? Mean, I'm very Ray. excited for Duke Nukem Forever. My name is Ray. No G. No I'm T, Ray. No D. I'm Ray. No B. I'm Ray. I'm Ray. Yeah, I'm Ray. See, you can't hear any G in that, right? I'm Ray. But this one? Well, hang on. Well, the file is called I'm Greg dot MP3. <laughs> All right, out. get on with it. Get out. So when we did the uh, Depression Fest episode, now uh, a bit older. Ah, uh, Depth Fest. Older. Yeah. A few Not to be ago. confused with the Depth Fest in Sacramento. No. <laughs> Everyone's dressing up like pirates. Right next to CuddleCon. Um, I mentioned that uh, you know I was waiting to here on a job, right? That's right. Didn't get it. Yeah, so that's well. great. So now back to, um, you know, nothing. <laughs> Not that I had anything, but, uh, yeah. But there's other stuff you can apply for, I'm sure. Yeah, and maybe other interviews I will go to and then not get those jobs, <laughs> you know? No, don't, so. no, that's a, that's a shitty attitude. Don't do that. Well, I mean, I understand that, you know, it's going to have to happen anyway, but it's still like, uh I just don't know, does, you know. I just does it necessarily have to be about video games, or do you think you could handle any kind of uh, like writing about technology? Well, you tell me. I think other than I think you could. All I have on my resume is game related stuff, and I don't have a degree, like I said. So what? What else? Yeah, but you have really a lot of experience writing about technology. That could go into different fields, right? I, I suppose so. I mean, I guess yeah. you're not wrong, but you know who. Maybe that I mean, maybe may not be maybe the same opinion as Vanity Fair that needs a new tech blogger. Yeah, I'm not. Really, <laughs> I'm not much. Of, I'm not much of a blogger in general, or writer. I don't. I don't know. What, I don't know what the term is anymore. Yeah. How about wait for it, Starbucks? Then no? I walk in every morning, and they're all like, "Hey, Gray." <laughs> no, it's Greg, you idiots. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I Susie. Say, it's not Sue's. Yeah. What I have been applying to is uh, copywriter positions. Oh, in yeah. Marketing and stuff. Uh, I think I could do that. But again, there's really nothing that really reflects my skill on that specific thing. So I don't think it really pops out to a lot of people. And again, you know, I don't have a degree in marketing. So I'm sure that would help too. But, you know, it's still, it's <laughs> the closest non game thing I could think of that I could maybe do if someone gave me a chance. Yeah, that could be fun. But it's all dependent on that great catch-22 of, well, you need experience to get this job, but you can't get experience. It's yeah. Like, That's where networking comes in, right, folks? Yeah. Be a fake extrovert and see what happens. <laughs> That's great. Hey, man, how's your family? Awesome. Could you give me a job? So, yeah, that was one of the, as that was one of the main things that we mentioned during that whole thing. I thought I'd give an update on that. Um and yeah, I'll keep at it. I'm not trying to be a 
shithead about it, but it's also like, well, you know, it's happened. And I'm also not like beating myself up over the fact that I didn't get it. Cause at that point it's just like, well, I'm too old to be caring about jobs in such a hugely emotional way. You know, like not everything is going to be my dream job or whatever. So, yeah, you know, I just do what I can apply, go have the interview, do as best I can. And then uh, not worry about it uh, so much before or after. So at least I'm keeping that attitude. Day laborer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, if only. Female dentist. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Mine lost. Now, hang on. You go in, you go into IGN, like, as far as I know, every day to do a podcast. Um, not quite, but isn't yeah. there? Couldn't you make a job out of that? <laughs> Walking into offices? Yeah, and sitting down and, you know, guesting on podcasts. I mean, you, you guessed on a bunch uh, of them. Uh, no, I guessed on two. What? At least, yeah. No, I'm talking about all the other ones, that, like the like uh, the, um, the the smaller ones. Right, the yeah. names. The names what I am I going to do, right charge now. people for that? I don't know. I don't know how it then, works. You know, alienate them? We've never had any guests because nobody wants to pay the $300. <laughs> right, and we get all these uh, interview requests in the mail, too. It's like, no, nah, sorry. We have yeah. a talent fee. That, right, yeah, no, that's, a, that's a better name for it. And uh, we have our writer, which states that uh, an interview must be accompanied with a big bag of M&Ms. Uh, yep. You can ship those overnight. That'd be great. Thanks. At least two crates of Arrowhead water. <laughs> probably, probably, probably can't uh, find a good uh, avenue to make money out of that. No? Because, you know, no one else really does. As far as you know, being a uh, podcast guest that makes some money for appearances doesn't a really pundit. happen. A pod pundit, a podnit. <laughs> I mean, sure, there are guests on real radio shows that may you know go through that sort of thing. Not so much on the uh, wild west that is podcasting. Well, well, what, maybe you could you could you could forge a sort of uh, a new career. Let's let's look at uh, yeah, you know. self self styled media gadfly Mo Rocca. I mean, he's been on everything. He's been on TV, radio, publications. He he just does freelance for any old thing, you know. You could you could turn that into a career. Writing certainly, you've already got the writing covered. You do freelance writing. Uh, best week ever. Is that still around? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Would have been a good idea though. Yeah, they need somebody to riff on video game current events. <laughs> it doesn't have to be about games though. I could do sitcoms or reality shows. Yeah. See. Remember Cheers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, I'm left looking for more uh, suitable opportunities. That's all. Well, folks, again, if you have any leads on the whereabouts of Ray's job, please <laughs> let us know. Hook him up with something. Yeah, and if you also uh, see my dignity on the way, please pick that up. All right, Alex. Hi. Things are happening. Things are moving along. That's right. Well, what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to great. think of a segue. Oh, you know, wait, hang on. This this will be great. I watch Wolverine again. <laughs> again? I don't know why. You're not lying but right now. I'm not lying, but this is the worst part. I liked it better the second time. <laughs> God damn it. And I think I know why. I think it's because the first time I got all my disappointment out of the way. Yeah. And so I knew which parts were kind of cool and which parts I could just disregard as crap. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, well, you know, no, sense. still, I'm, I don't take anything back. Still a piece of shit, but okay. a little bit more enjoyable if you just take it as the piece of shit that it is and not try to hold it to the standard of any of the other movies. Right. So now you, so it's, it's, would you say it's so bad it's good or is that too oh, strong yet? No, that's a tough call. I think parts of it are. Okay. Sure, but part parts of it are genuinely cool, but they're very few and far between, and they're I feel like they're they're spoiled, they're ruined on the movie as a whole. I see. Like yeah, the whole the okay. whole adamantium adamantium infusion scene, and then he he wakes up from that and slashes his way out of the facility. That's kind of cool, you know. He gets shot in the head, and the bullet bounces right off. It's great. Spoilers. But, oh no. Okay. Oh, yeah, God. I understand. Um, actually, uh, side note, I just saw some promotional stills from the, the Wolverine sequel called, mm -hmm. get ready for it, The Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's coming out next summer. Actually, 
looks pretty good. They actually have some good people working on it. Is it actually a um, sequel or a reboot? Because if you're going to call it The Wolverine. It yeah, like it's a, a little of both. It's it's not a reboot because it's not a prequel. It takes place uh, at the end of the chronology so far. So it's not oh, okay. a reboot. It's sort of following the character. Well, because they've said, all right, when we've done When he gained it. the the title. Uh, I've heard that's actually a, it's a long uh, process. You've got to apply. There's a lot of red tape. Right, yeah. Plus, he's Canadian. Who knows how the laws work? I've been waiting for eight months for the Alex, okay? <laughs> the yeah. list is very long. Well. Soy Alex. Oh, she goes, that, El Alex. Well, yeah. <laughs> Soy El Alejandro. Oh, there's so, much right. shit, there's so much shit in the show we should trademark and we're not. Somos bomberos. Oh, boy. That's some of the only Spanish I remember from high school. It means we are firefighters. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, anyway, uh, yo quiero Alejandro. comer el pollo. What? Thank you, Alejandro. <laughs> De nada. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I think the movie actually looks pretty good. They've said they're specifically trying to get away from the over-the-top stupid action of the first Wolverine movie. They said, you know, because in the first movie, there's a famously dumb scene where uh, a truck explodes and Wolverine is propelled into the air and he jumps out of the truck and then uh, slashes through a helicopter. Yeah. Well, it's ridiculous. It's action. It is action, but it's it's dumb action. And they said that they don't want to do any of that shit in The Wolverine. They're going to try to keep it to um, uh, semi-realistic, you know, hand-to-hand or weaponed combat. Nothing crazy. I think it's called armed combat. That's it! Yeah. Adamantium armed combat. Yeah, right. There was a, there was a photo of the Silver Samurai, who was a great character in the... Con- it, it takes place in Japan this time. That's the only reason I'm a little wary, because Japan and Hollywood don't usually um, mix that well. Yeah. He's probably played by a Chinese guy. You remember, you remember Lucy Liu's awful Japanese in Kill Bill? Never saw it, but yeah, I can imagine. Like the rest of the movie, pretty good. And then like, I guess it, it doesn't matter to most audiences, but like if you've ever studied Japanese or if you live in Japan, mm-hmm. it's like, I mean, I, you would find it uh, deplorable. The state of her Japanese. <laughs> I was think surprised of a good that the U.S. speaking Japanese. <clears throat> oh, outtakes from Kill Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he visited the set one day. <laughs> he did. <laughs> My God. Well, on the subject of that whole uh, movie and what it's doing, have you seen yeah. the trailer for the new Superman movie, Man of Steel? Because that sounds sort no. of the same thing. It's very really? sort of somber, a little bit more serious and stuff. It's not like the, the last one, Superman Returns, which was more trying to stay faithful to the older movies and yeah. didn't really work. So this one is more like just a whole... You know, a reboot, whatever, and it's like, you know, a bit more, um, like I said, somber. Did you, did, I'm sorry, did you say sombreros? No, I didn't. <laughs> que lastima! No, please All right. God damn. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but also not the Tim Burton idea for whatever the fuck that was going to be. Oh my God, yeah. did you see the pictures of that? The, oh, the, yes. um, oh. <laughs> like, I'm not against reimaginings, but there's some things you just shouldn't mess with. I am against spindly Nicolas Cage in a costume that would never, ever work anywhere. Did you say spindly? Spindly? I think it's spindly. Can we get somebody? Can we, can we get a lifeline? No. How about no? It doesn't matter. I said something wrong. I'm sorry. Can we pull the audience? Jesus. Look who you're talking to, okay? It's me, Greg, okay? Just fucking <laughs> understand that I'm going to say some things wrong, okay? Gabagool. Alex! Well... Yeah, you know what? I've never been a fan of the Superman mythology, but right. I don't know. I don't know everything about this movie. Obviously, it's only a trailer, but he seems to be like Clark Kent sort of... Well, I heard that... Um, disappears he, into the public life. and I heard that he gets bone claws? No, I don't think. Are well, you sure? I'm Somebody sure. said that in a blog. It has to be true. <laughs> Well, he would have nothing to do with Superman, for one thing. So. You know what? No, that's that may be the best uh, thing I got out of purchasing Wolverine on iTunes. <laughs> is, I, is I got that special interview with Stan Lee, and I yeah. got the drop. That, that can apply to almost anything, any any instance of fans being batshit idiots. Somebody <laughs> said that in a blog. It has to be true. Love it. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I saw Captain America and Stanley's cameo in that just made me laugh out loud and it was the only thing in that movie that I ever laughed at. Oh, what was it? I forget. <laughs> it was him dressed up as some of the, uh, whoever, general, anonymous general guy. Oh, God. 
when the uh, person they expect to come up to the podium, they expect Captain America, but it's some other just big guy talking to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley goes, I thought he'd be taller. <laughs> <laughs> and I just burst Hang out on. laughing. Let, let's do this. Um, let's t- sort of try to lay out all the cameos he's had in the Marvel movies. He was the mailman of Fantastic right. Four, right? I, I haven't seen them all. Okay. Uh, well, let's. I'll, I'll try to help. Let's fill in each other's gaps, right? I, that, I didn't mean that I, to sound sexual, but it just did. <laughs> I've seen Spider. I've seen all the Spider Mans and okay. all the Iron Mans and Captain America and Thor. All right. So he's he's general dude in in Captain America. He's a mailman in Fantastic Four. He's he's a beach goer in X Men One. Yeah. He's got to be a security guard in something else. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, he's he's walking a dog in Vertigo. He was a security guard in like an Iron Man commercial, right? It was for like <laughs> what? chips, right? There was some Iron Man tie-in commercial, I think for chips or soda or something like that. And he was a security guard in that. Is that right? Anyway. Only the commercial though? That would be great. I Probably both. I don't know. It was something like that. I may be totally off. Uh, he also, he was, he's been in some of those video games too. He was the narrator of like the original Spider-Man game. But was, but was he playable? Uh, in one of them, yes, he is. Really? Yeah, I think the newest Amazing Spider-Man one. You can oh, play as awesome. Stanley. <laughs> yeah, and he slings webs and everything. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? I'm I'm pretty serious. Yeah. Somebody said that in a blog. It has to be true. No, look it up on Game Facts, old man. <laughs> Don't call me man. Are we done okay, with that he, segment then? Wait, no, I'm no, I'm trying to think okay, of all the sorry. movies he's been. Oh no. Not a movie, but he was uh, he was in the first season of Heroes. He was a bus driver. Okay. He had a cameo in that. I thought that was uh, that was neat because that wasn't really a Marvel thing. No. It was just about superheroes. I saw the Stanley documentary on Netflix. Mm-hmm. He was in that. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be great if he was in that, but he wasn't himself. Yeah. <laughs> it, was just, it was just the interviewer. <laughs> yeah, he just has a wig on and he's talking about Stan Lee. <laughs> oh, he I knew Stan very intimately. Alex <laughs> <laughs> uh, Celsior. Uh, why did they do that? God damn it. <laughs> I would have done that. He's going he's gonna to have a cameo at his own funeral. Yes. <laughs> now, I did not know Stan personally. Yeah. <laughs> That'd also be brilliant, yeah. So what else he got? I mean, Stan Lee wise. Um, Jesus. Well, he was in. Um, God, what was he in? Uh, Spider Man Three. Was he in that? Uh, probably. <laughs> was he Hal Sparks? I think he was Hal Sparks <laughs> in Spider Man Three. <laughs> somebody, somebody confirm that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, he, right. he was he, always some sort of observer in Spider Man movies, right? Yeah, it was just some I guy. Think that, that's kind of the, the nature of cameos in superhero movies to begin with. There's all this carnage unfolding. You've got to have reaction shots. Yeah, <laughs> you need people saying, "Hey, it's a Spider-Man." <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at all those X-Men. <laughs> Boy, that guy's stretchy. <laughs> Boy, those X-Men sure are first class. Am I right? <laughs> oh. That man's made of iron, and so on. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at that thing. <laughs> oh, Try to think of a good one for Thor, and I can't. Oh, now oh. I, t- in talking about superhero movies, I heard that uh, our good friend Joseph Gordon-Levitt was confirmed as Batman in the Justice League movie. Is that true, or is that still a rumor? I don't recall. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear confirmed. Yeah, as far as I know, it's okay. Rumor. But, uh, All right. Well, I guess it's still a rumor. Yeah, because that Justice League is actually something I'm kind of interested in. Sure. Uh, I used, to, I really used to like watching the the Justice League TV show, the cartoon. That was actually mm-hmm. pretty well done most of the time. Yeah. And I feel like as a movie, it could work, but I don't know. On the other hand, a lot of the uh, the superhero team crossover movies are never exceptional, with the exception of the Avengers. That was a milestone. Right. I mean, I think there may be a new bar raised. Let's say. Yeah, I hope so. Someone made a fake poster for World's Finest, which was the comic series that was Batman and oh, Superman yeah. working together. Yeah. That, that'd be a cool movie, I think. But, uh, you know, just, just a fake thing. 
I don't know. I, I think the appeal of Nolan's Batman movies to me was the fact that it was everything was based in reality. I mean, with, with the exception of Liam Neeson coming back to life or whatever, or maybe that was explained. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's everything is is more or less based in reality. It, but as soon as you introduce Superman to that, it's like, well, look at this, I'm invincible. Well, now Batman doesn't seem as unique, you know. Yeah, he's still cool though. I mean, people still like him. It's not like I know, it's just it's just the dynamic of that universe. You're sort of disrupting it for me when you introduce superpowers into a non-superpowered uh, setting like Gotham. Well, you're you're easily disrupted. So. And I know that yes, there are Batman villains that have crazy mystical powers, but they haven't been any of the Nolan films to well, my knowledge. Scarecrow kind of. No, he made a chemical compound. Oh, is that right? Yes, that was a, a thing oh, that he can made. Explain in his lab. it all away with chemicals, can't you? Yes. Not you specifically. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Somebody well, said that in a Gabagool. <laughs> well, that does sound like, you know, the approach of this new Superman movie. So I think maybe if they did make a movie like that with them together, it might make a more compatible fit. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Let's find out next year when all these things come out. <laughs> all right. I don't know for sure. All right, fine. It's a date. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Just somebody making uh, fanciful noise at us. We're just crazy about each other. Aw. <laughs> Good for you! Except when we uh, fought last night. That wasn't so bad. Good. We had a little we had a little discussion. We did? About uh, how you react to me. And perhaps what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> when I say I'm some s- things, Sorry, you that's take getting a to too be, uh... seriously. Instinct. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had, we had a little, uh, we had a little one-on-one therapy uh, over the iMessage. I think it was pretty <laughs> fruitful. Yeah. The good thing is that we're so used to it, and it only lasts like a couple minutes. We're back to laughing at each other. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that comes through in this show too. But it's also like you just, you just go off on me. It's like Jesus Christ, Alex. Just calm down. I mean, do. that's not exactly what I meant. Can you forgive me for Christ's sake? I don't think so. And then, <laughs> no, I'm saying. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, man, how long is this stuff been simmering? Oh, quite a long time. I'm just saying. We get past it quite quickly. We do. Relatively. We, then mean, we move on to a whole different set of bullshit. Right, exactly. <laughs> because but we're again, busy I don't men. Know, I don't know what you bottle up, but... Um, Limoncello? <laughs> no. I mean, what, no? You're, you're, <laughs> you're not Danny DeVito for the last time. That stuff is delicious, though. <laughs> My parents made that years ago. I hope they make Bo- some more for Christmas. Well, I guess Bo- it's too late now. We Bo- like Lee Michelle. Yeah. You just you soak uh, lemon zest in grain yes. alcohol. All right. And add sugar and stuff. Cool. It's delicious. I think one of the things that we came away from in our discussion, though, like I was saying last night, um, you don't have to really be afraid of insulting me too often. Or really? offending me. I think so. There's only a couple of things that really annoy me and set me off the way that you would to me. And that's, you know, tell me what they are. Well, I said already went, but let's go ahead and say it on the show. Okay. Like, um, don't call me Shirley. Number one. (laughs) I don't like, I don't like being pointed out as quiet or whatever. Yeah. Um, I've been teased about that just in general conversation. And really now I, when I say, I think you're quiet, I don't mean it as a personality thing. Uh, I mean it as, um, you are, you are hesitant to be loud in your apartment because you think your neighbors will will hear it. That's true. But that doesn't reflect on your personality. Well, maybe it does, but, um, it does. If you, uh, if somebody, uh, for example, is a Retronauts fan and that's the one thing they keep bringing up about me. Okay. Um, well, I can't. Yeah. I don't disagree with that person. Yeah, but I, I look. I don't disagree or agree. The fact is that it grates when it's brought up. That's look, if you're not with you us, know. you're against us. <laughs> is that how it goes? Is that Justice League? Oh. Yes. Uh, what was the other thing? Crap. Oh, just like uh, you know, like on the show, just being pointed out when I get something wrong, which is not something that you even do that much. I don't, I, I would have phrased that a, uh, when I tend. No, never mind. <laughs> I rest my case. Uh, yeah, just stuff like that. Uh, meanwhile, I can say almost anything about you. Wait, hang on. I'm, so, I'm get, sorry. Back uh, up a little bit. We're, we've been talking about uh, DC stuff. Uh, could you instead say, meanwhile? <laughs> just humor Meanwhile? Me. There we go. You're much more of a, 
of a sensitive Sally, like I say. Gonna fucking cut you. Yep, see? No. I am, but um, mostly only with you and people that I know very well. I can't do that with regular people. Which is so weird. (laughs) Why? Why is that weird, though? Well, it's like you reserve all that for people that you know and or love, you know? It's Yes. uh, It's kind of a weird way to go about things. I do, I, when I do that stuff, when I go off on something, I'm not usually as angry as I sound. I just, I, I like to sound angry in that way because it's a great way to vent and it keeps me from being really angry. Okay, but not even angry, but also just, you know, annoyed or irritated or set off. Yes. Well, that's, or I mean, t- I got to get that stuff out, right? <laughs> yeah, but why, <laughs> why two people close to you more than others? Why two like, okay. K? My point is that you know uh, we're pretty close, and like I just said, you can say a lot of things about me, and it just bounces right off. You're not because... a great driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I think I said that during Homeland Week. And uh, you know, I'm I'm fine with that because I know I am. Maybe maybe I'm not that great with the parking. Fine, I'll admit that. I need some work with the parking. Fine, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna dwell on it and you know start to yell at you about it. Sonographer, are you getting this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's been our mini therapy session. Yeah. Uh, perhaps we should move on once more, go into some fan fun next. That's a good idea. Let's take a quick break and get to some fan fun. All right. It's not about us all the time. Sometimes it's about you. Shh, shh, shh. I'm talking. Parakeets in between tweets sometimes get too quiet. Oh, but to have no fear, cause soon you'll hear a parakeet's riot, just try it. A multiplication, that's the name of the game. In every generation, you know what it pay the same. Yeah, it's multiplication, that's the name of the game. In each generation, they'll play the same. Ladies, gents. No more Whoppers. Oh, yes. And now... All right, everybody, here's Alex. Hi, folks. <laughs> I think we got some fan fun coming oh, up uh, here. Excelsior! Yes, we right. do. We got two donors right out of the gate. Both of them have crazy Scandinavian last names. What does that mean? Uh, we're, we're, ma- we're making it big. I guess. In the Scandos. That's what I like to call that <laughs> group of countries over there. Uh, no affiliation with Nodos. No. <laughs> Or, or Scantron. <laughs> I've been thinking about buying a new scanner. No, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Yes, donors. Uh, here we go. Who are Number these th- weirdly named people? Well, I mean. the first one is Dennis Zoolander. I'm going to call him Zoolander, and I'm sure he's yeah, gotten that I mean, before. That's a given. In you fact, I've already that. said that during his uh, Facebook like-like. Yeah. <laughs> do you like the Facebook page, or do you like-like the Facebook page? Mm-hmm. All right, then, Dennis. Alex, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, then uh, here we go. All right, thank you, Denny. Uh, His purpose, Doritos, an actual canned do from the top of a mountain for Ray. But I want something. (laughs) That was fast. Well, Uh, he he requested uh, a drop, and uh, unfortunately I didn't have time to play it during his uh, thanks, so he's going to have to donate again if he wants to hear it. Really? No, well, also I forgot to make it. It's it's you it's you. He wanted a drop of you saying pussy nerd shit. Okay. Nah, well, yeah. Uh well, no, I think okay. I do too. I want it too. No, nope, that's okay. Thank you though. Who's next? All right. And our next donor is a Christian Mervold. I hope I'm saying that right. Mervold Mur- <sighs> Mur- Mur- Moira McTaggart. Is there an umlaut? No, it's M Y R V O L D. I see. Okay. Oh wait. It could be Christian. My R V Old. <laughs> that could work. Okay, then. Here we go. Thanks very much, Christian, my RV old. Uh, his purpose, to help you guys through the harsh winter. That's a good purpose, because I'll tell you what, it's freezing here in Japan. Well, not today. It's actually very sunny and warm. All right. Good Thanks, for Chris. you, Alex. All right. What are you, you complaining about? You said it's 40 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> no, you... Ugh. You're burning up. We went over this. <laughs> That's donors. All right. Don't get all crazy on me. What's that? That's donors. That's donors. Next up. Uh, Wait, can I just say? What? I think we can uh, 
we don't exactly have to give things for Ray. I mean, sure, I pour, poured out my heart and soul at one time, but I think and we uh, thank you for that. You know, we can go back to uh, <laughs> pitching in for the whole show because really, it all goes to Alex. He's the keeper of the funds. So I am the treasurer. I don't. I don't. I don't see any of that shit. I don't know what he's doing with it, really. But <clears throat> well, uh, a couple of Cayman Islands offshore holding corporations. I'm just saying. Again, I don't mean to be a dick. I do appreciate people acknowledging, you know, me and wanting to help in whatever way. Please, you can do that if you want. I'm not going to fucking stop you. But you know, it's not that huge of a deal. And oh wait, I'm hang on. on. Stuff. I forgot. We have a third donor. Uh, his message just says, "Fuck that Ray." <laughs> Here's some money for Alan. I don't know, I'm not reading that one. <laughs> it's the Alan and Greg show. I'm returning his money. <laughs> Alan and Greg here on no I more whoopies. It. What if we were the Alan and Greg show? Yeah. What if we just, what if we were like bought by a, uh, you know, media conglomerate and then they replaced us and suddenly oh, no, no more whoppers was, was not Ray and Alex, but you know, Derek and Josh or something. <laughs> Wouldn't that be uh, scary? Yeah, that, oh. I'm Derek. Yeah. Derek, be like what happened, Derek. Like what happened to the man show or something. I wore costumes at a convention. So- okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. I cosplayed several times. <laughs> yeah. uh, Clooney tunes, am I right, folks? Thanks for listening. <laughs> I've been Derek, anyway. Mary, oh, fuck. I'm trying to work ER into Mary Melodies. <laughs> But it's not working. <laughs> Mary R. Melodies? Well, Maura Tierney was on ER, so you could say. <laughs> okay. Maura Melodies. More Maura Melodies. <laughs> I love yeah. it. All right, we'll give that to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> That's the upcoming third season of No More Whoppers, exclusively on Logo. Let's continue. Right. We got Facebook likes. Do you believe this? Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. They're not great this week. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, you've been um, you busy. You told me. I've been very busy. I'm going to give it a try anyway. Raymond, are you ready? Yeah. I forget. Right, Do just, I have to play the music or did I put that in? Put it in later. Yeah, okay. Sorry. All right. Aquatic respirator Stephen Gill. Uh, Auntie M's understudy Wen Tien. Surface to air Missile Smith. Hey, which one is it? Joseph or Nellis? What if one of the wild and crazy guys was a street? It's Lane Martin. <laughs> Mark mark my lens, no new taxes. Sacrificing himself to save the rest of the party, it's Eric Plunk. And flosser, saucer, and all-around tosser, Christopher Schlosser. <laughs> okay, and two of those I didn't get. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. There was somebody on Wild and Crazy Kids named Lane? Wild, did I say Wild and Crazy Kids? It, I wrote Wild and Crazy Guys. You may have, yes. I was, was thinking st- of this show. It was a <laughs> Steve Martin away. gag. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. My bad. <sighs> uh, I forget the other one that confused me, but whatever. Uh, anyway, Omar Gooding. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to him. <laughs> I hear his brother's doing all right. Mm-hmm. Well, he did for a little bit, and then he did Snow oh. Dogs. Dude! He's, he's huge. He has a fucking country named after him. Come on. <laughs> oh, yes, I've been to Gooding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lovely people there. When you go through customs, you have to swim through a pool full of uh, al- floating <laughs> plastic alligators and <laughs> collect a palm tree. Oh, God. Uh. Bringing it back to Omar. Do you remember the Human Space Invaders game on that show? No, what? Yeah, they they lined up a bunch of kids, and then they would slowly creep left and right like Space Invaders. And then you had to, like, throw water balloons at their targets that they were holding up or something. Oh, boy. Yeah. From high up, yeah. Pretty neat. Moving on. All right. The jewel in our crown. Over nerds. Got a wooden sword, and the real one cost me three grand. Now I'm saving up for a third. My car is a Decepticon, pretty sure I'm from Nippon, I'm an over-nerd. Our first over comes from a Jean-Victor Despre. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I can't, wait, his last name is Despres, Despre, Despre, Descartes, Jean-Victor, Jean, 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 JVD. JVD writes, hey no Momo, generally speaking, I would, what, what, Ray? I'm in the middle of something. Go ahead, Alex. I'm All sorry. Right. 
Generally speaking, I would identify more as a kid in an adult's body than a nerd per se, but sometimes my enthusiasm gets the best of me. So make of this story what you will. There's a small bar not far from where I live. It wasn't my favorite bar, but it was the kind of place where I'd go to not be found for an evening. Oh, and they also had a Miss Pac-Man cocktail cabinet. It was a blue-collar kind of bar, so the cabinet stuck out a bit, and so did I as I pumped an endless stream of quarters into the machine. But nobody bothered me, and I didn't bother them. Except I had this one habit. After a few drinks, I couldn't resist sharing my wealth of classic video game trivia with anyone who showed even the slightest hint of interest in the medium. Oh, Imagine the scene from the Scott Pilgrim movie where Scott awkwardly tries to tell Ramona the history of how Pac-Man got his name. <laughs> I then was just thinking Mary of that. <laughs> yep. Then replace Mary Elizabeth Winstead with a half-in-the-bag 48-year-old roofer, and you get the idea. So one night, a tall, rough-looking man in his mid-20s staggers in, notices I'm wearing a one-up mushroom t-shirt, and comments about how much he loved Mario 2 when he was a kid. My eyes lit up like the dawn. Little did this poor man realize he'd just given me an opening to lay the smack down on every game trivia buff's favorite dead horse, the origin story of Mario 2. You all know how it goes. You start by telling them how Mario 2 we played as kids wasn't really Mario 2, remaining vague enough to pique their interest. Then you elaborate by telling them that in Japan, it was a totally different game, and they just added Mario characters and called it Mario 2 in the States, always sure to drip out just enough information to make it sound as if this were some sort of conspiratorial secret and not just something you read on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. It worked, and the man looked like his mind was blown. Then, about halfway through my story, he burst out laughing. Apparently, saying the words Doki Doki Panic without a hint of irony in your voice is funny to some people. <laughs> he stumbled away laughing, repeating the words Doki Doki out loud, and then everyone else in the bar stood confused, wondering what on earth I'd been talking about with this man to leave him laughing and repeating seemingly gibberish words. I take comfort in knowing that I've never been the bullying kind of nerd, just excitable in a very childlike manner. Anyway, that's really the best story I've got. Love the show, etc. Yours truly, JVJ Despres... Dupre, Dupre, Descartes, from New Brunswick, Canada. Have you ever heard of Nintendo? Thank you, Jave. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Boring other people with video game trivia is something I think all of us have done at one point or another, right? Uh, maybe not since, like, grade school. No? For me. Um, I once, I once I showed... I quickly learned the error of my ways in that. I once showed my grandmother the uh, closing credits to Super Mario World. Yeah. Those are good credits, though. Yeah, because I like the song. I mean, I prefer Mario 3 as a game, but that had the best ending. Yeah. All right. Still the best one, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Scott Pilgrim even before he said that, and that was like yeah. 20 minutes into that movie, and that's when I just gave up on that whole thing. That was... What do you mean gave up? Ooh. Well, I mean, I saw the rest of the movie, but I was just like, oh, God, no. This is how, this is how bad it's going to get. Uh, how bad was it? I haven't seen it. Pretty bad. I've heard it's, it's, a, uh, it's a geek darling of a movie. Mm-hmm. Didn't like it, but if you know me by now, that's no surprise. So I'll leave what it. What didn't that. you like about it? I don't want to go into it, Alex. Why? Wait, no, that's what this show is for. It's a platform for your stupid opinions. But we're in the middle of the over nerd segment. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Save it for the show, okay? Oh, you're right. Oh, wait. I do. Wait. I can, I can tell a story related oh, to go. this, actually. Do it. Uh, very recent. In fact, just this week, I made the grave mistake of trying to uh, get Alex interested in the game. Oh, no. And uh, what happened was no. I was bringing up the fact that uh, on the 3DS eShop in Japan, all the Rockman games are a little bit uh, off. You know, they're like 100 yen off each. You can download them and play them. And I yeah, thought, you know, Alex... Alex, Alex likes Mega Man games. He always plays them at that bar. I love them. And he's going to get a 3DS. And I thought, oh, this is great. He'll, he'll love this. He no, loves those games. So I showed it to him. And then he uh, came back with this uh, like five-line mini rant about how he doesn't like playing those games on handhelds because of something, something. Or other I don't. That I'm retarded. And then, you know, that's my it's, story. And so that's, that's also a little bit... <laughs> No, it's because I, when I play a Mega Man game, I beat the mm. fuck out of the controller, okay? If the controller happens to have the screen on it, I'm not going to be seeing anything. That's fine. I'm going to be afraid to but, squeeze uh, my 3DS because I'm going to break it. I'm, <laughs> I'm hard on controllers. That's fine, but the over nerd part of my story is that, you know, I made the mistake of doing that and I felt a little bad because oh. I should have known better from the multitude of experiences doing that sort of thing with you and you just being a total zero, which is fine. Alex. 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 Yeah, that's right. I got my crew to back me up here. All right. 
It's all my no, fault. No, you know what? You're not wrong. An, an, an Omowo listener also uh, tweeted me with the same thing. I was more polite to them. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, because, again, people who you love and are close to. <laughs> I can't. I, yeah. I, you you know, treat I to, them with the requisite amount of respect. And I have to unload on them because I don't want to be. I, you know, I can't be mean to a stranger. You know, the ancient uh, Greeks believed that uh, they had to be kind to all strangers because one of them could be a god in disguise. I'm pretty yeah. sure you're not a god. So, yeah, there are other times when I've, uh, even years prior to all this, you know, when I've tried to just uh, lay facts or updates or something about games on Alex and just uh, didn't, didn't communicate, didn't pass over. And I never stopped. <laughs> Folks, speaking of Passover, I, I can't change him. That's what I'm saying. You just gotta let him go. You're out. Oh damn it! <laughs> but all my stuff is here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex. I know you were thinking of a story. I don't know if I kept you from that, but uh, no, no, I don't have one, and you do. So there we go. Yeah. Next over nerd. All right. all right. This is from a Matthew Marcus. He says, "Ray and Alex, I serendipitously had an over nerd moment this past weekend, just as you two were lamenting running out of nerdy stories to tell in the last episode." Oh, good. So, this past Friday night, I was staying at a college friend's place in Arlington, Virginia. He brought me along to one of his friend's birthday celebration. I'm going to add an S in there. He would have wanted it that <laughs> way. I don't know why I talk about him like he's dead. <laughs> Which was held at a laser tag arcade. This, in and of itself, could be an over-nerd story, since we were a group of seven, with a median age of 27, playing laser tag with middle and high school kids. Although it was for good reason, as some of the attendees were religiously observant and thus did not drink alcohol. There are oh, wow. admittedly few socially acceptable ways to celebrate in your 20s that don't involve drinking. Yes. But the over in question was one of our young competitors. When he arrived at the arcade, I could tell the nerd was strong with this one. Oh, man, Marcus, you're not helping your case. The way he <laughs> carried himself told me he was a regular at the arcade and took the competition seriously. You know the type, the aggressively nerdy ones who compensate for their lack of coolness by trying to outdo the cool kids at things like laser tag. Case in point, during the last game of the night, he insisted on being on his own team and was bragging that he nearly beat the other two teams with about six people each in team score by himself. <laughs> but the real overnerd moment happened soon after that. It was about 12.20 a.m. and the birthday boy wanted to go bar hopping in D.C. We started deliberating on which bar and to what area of D.C. we should go. The overnerd, who was getting into his car when he overheard our conversation, decided to interject. The conversation went like this. Overnerd. If you're looking for another place, there's one in Bethesda and another in Alexandria. And everyone stops talking and turns around to look at the kid. Birthday boy. Another one of what? Overnerd. I thought you guys were talking about laser tag places. <laughs> Birthday boy. No, we're going out to bars. <laughs> Overnerd. Uh, oh, there is an awkward pause. Then, thoroughly embarrassed, the kid shuts his car door. End scene. Keep up the good work. I'm Alex. Matthew Jamarcus, Jamaican bobsledder of Noma Woe episode 29 fame. I think we've all been out laser tag hopping. Yes. Twice, yeah. No. You know what? You never forget it. You oh, uh, you wake up yeah. the next day. Um, yeah. I don't know. In bed with a laser gun. <laughs> <laughs> Hung over from all the bright lights. Yeah. Shot in your face. Oh boy. Have you ever played laser tag? Uh, admittedly, no. It's one of those things where. Um, okay, one of my other big complexes is that I hate sort of team exercises because I always do something wrong and I always beat myself up completely over it and then I just ruin my whole experience. Yeah. I got a lot of so, that um from like when I was a kid, like playing sports with other kids and like I maybe I don't know the like I I'm, I'm pretty solid on rules of sports now, but as a kid I'm like, uh what the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, that and, and that, board games. I've been to like board game nights as an older when I was older. When I've been older <laughs> I should say. Are you talking and about yeah. like Monopoly? No. Yeah. Or like you know, D&D? More nerdy board games. Okay. People do. And, you know, everybody has to learn the rules, but I still, you know, maybe not completely grasp it, but everybody's moving along anyway, and I just feel terrible, and then I, you know, I make a move or something, and somebody has to point it out immediately, and I'm just like, fuck, okay, geez. That's how it goes for me. Not yeah. relevant to this story, I know, but... <laughs> Well, I think, think, I think those that. kinds of games are fun, but you have to have somebody who's willing to be patient and teach you through that phase. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, as soon as somebody who knows the game in and out starts to get pissed off at me, I no longer want to play. Yeah. It's like, and, fuck, uh, fuck off. I never played this before. What are you getting angry about? <laughs> well, the hilarious thing is that nobody even get, really gets pissed off at me, per yeah. se. Um, it's just, you know, them sort of immediately catching me like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, that sort of thing. Oh, and, boy. Uh, same reason I never wanted to go to paintball, because that would just be horrendous. I know. Oh, man, yeah. 
So. All right, I played paintball once and laser tag once, and they're they're both pretty awful. I don't know. I guess <laughs> if you're into like shooting, maybe paintball would be more fun. But it right. was just it was for it was for a kid's birthday party, and it was just all this preparation for a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And uh, yeah, laser tag, pretty much the same thing. Like you go into this dark room, everything's black. There's a there's a black light and. Yeah. You can only see like the kid in the white T-shirt and orange laser guns everywhere. Yeah, and stuff the, the, like that. Oh, sorry. The um, the hit packs didn't really work. Like you know, you got you shoot the laser sure. at the thing on somebody's hip, and it, it counts as a hit. Yeah. But like they didn't work half the time, and sometimes they could hit you when they weren't even pointing it at you. It was ridiculous. Yeah, things like that. You know, the fact that I can I, that I don't enjoy things that other people yeah. do shows me that there are a lot of different nerds out there. You know, the yes. different stripes, and it's like yeah. not everybody is exactly like me. So, you know, I can't really feel surprised when you know there are nerdy people who will go to these things and have fun. Whereas me, I just will always have these miniature nervous breakdowns internally and just can't deal with it anymore. Yeah, that's why I think you know the word nerd in general has lost a lot of meaning because right. now, like everybody's a nerd about something. Now I know, but I mean, think about what think about the story that was just told. You know, there were these actual yeah. nerds. You know, <laughs> the traditional definition, let's say, who will go to these laser tag places and you know be involved in it and engrossed in it. And that's, that's not me, that's for sure. Yeah, I'll stick with my FPSs. Thank you. Now I'm gonna say um, I did. I, I enjoyed. That day when I went to play laser tag, not because of laser tag, but because uh, we went to the Challenge Center, which was the name of an arcade slash laser tag arena. Oh, okay. Was it and, sponsored by Challenge Butter? Yes. And they were the, <laughs> the they were only <laughs> one, one of two Sorry. places in Pittsburgh that I knew of that had a Killer Instinct Killer Instinct arcade machine. Oh God, yes. It was that and Kennywood, which is a famous uh, amusement park from the turn of the century. Okay, starting to sound like the kid in the story. What? Hey, where are you guys <laughs> going? <laughs> I know where we can find another killer in Snake Machine. <laughs> Why do we need to find another one? There's one right here. <laughs> I thought we were going killer in Snake Hopping. <laughs> oh, I love it. I know a place at the wharf that has a killer in Snake 2 machine. <laughs> oh man, the Challenge Center also had M-Tech. You remember that game? I do, yeah. And how it was supposed to come out for the 32X and I was so excited it never did. Uh, I guess it didn't. I thought it did. Oh, did it? Yeah. Well, then I, I just say you never bought it. So. Wait, M Tech or T Mech? T Mech, I'm sorry. M- yeah, T-Mech. I always confuse it with Magitech Armor from FF6. You're right, it's T Mech. <laughs> of course. We all do, it's okay. All right. So, yeah, T Mech, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, Kafka. So, is that over nerds? Yes, it is. We got some more in the hopper, but we're saving them for next time. Yes. Can we call it the Dennis Hopper? Uh, yeah. No, wait, Dennis was the donor, right? So, yeah. no, that's, that's too bad. Dennis, send an over nerd, and <laughs> we can call it the Dennis Hopper. Uh. Would you please? Thank you. So, yes, um, maybe we should wind down the show. I think that's a good idea. I think we're at that point. Okay. Folks, thank you for listening. Um... Of course, if you want to send us money, go ahead and do that. Numberwhoppers.tumblr.com. That's our main site. What's up? (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Yeah, we put all our stuff up on there. And uh, Facebook likes can do that on a Facebook page. Can you believe it? Facebook.com slash numberwhoppers. Hey, and over nerds and, you know, any sorts of other communication that you'd like to communicate to us, numberwhoppers at gmail.com is the best place to do that through. Am I using too many words? Do I sound I a little think bit so. Could you cut it? Could you cut out some of the words a little bit? Okay. Me like email send to no more whoppers at gmail. Thank you. Thanks. And uh yeah. Uh I got a plug. Oh, go for it. Oh yeah. Scroll number eight. Scroll number eight is amazing. I highly recommend it. Yes. It's all about Jolico, which was an old uh third party Nintendo publisher. You say Jolico? You that? Jolico, yes. You don't say Jolico? Well, it technically, if we're talking about English parlance, it would be Jalico because it is made up of the name Japan Leisure Corporation. So yeah, I guess it I'm, should I'm, be Jalico, I don't know. but uh, I tend to go with the names that I spoke when I was a kid, and I always read. Jalico. I tend to go with how it's pronounced on like the intro screens to the Super Nintendo games, the Jalico, like 
Yeah, but that was a Japanese. So thing. anyway, not well. It's it's something. It sounds a little bit better than Jalico. Let's be honest, okay? I don't. Yeah, anyway. I don't like Jalico. I like Jalico better than Jalico. Okay, yes. Yeah, Plus, Jalico connotes uh, some kind of jocularity. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Yes. Uh, except you're not in this magazine, so you're not actually on the same. Page. Uh, oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, uh, scroll number eight. It's all about Jalico. Bunch of games that. Uh, well, you uh, say Jalico. About. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's gray. <laughs> For the love of Christ. Uh. You can get that at scroll.vg. Uh, Five dollars PDF. What's what's the print one? Thirteen. This is the worst adaptation Hopefully. of Groundhog Day I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, you wrote the script. It's your own fucking fault. Uh, Why so did yes. I just write that line that you just said, though? Scroll off EG once again. Yeah. Uh, Fascinating. And I don't, you know what? I'm going to point this out right now. Uh, Ray, I think you write about uh, video games objectively better than anybody I know because you don't have any of that attitude. You're not some punk ass game journal that has, has something to prove. You're just a historian and you do it well. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it's something, yeah. I, I, try and, I try and keep that up. So, yeah, well, you do. You. It's like, I read that, you would never know that writing that good comes from someone like you, you know? Yes. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> and viewers like you. Thank you. Alex, what can you say? I mean, you got the 10 and 10 uh, stuff. Yeah, folks, if you're, if you're not listening already, I will tweet aggressively when 9 and 9 drop. But please, please, please listen to the last 10 episodes of 10 and 10. They will end on Christmas Day. Um, I think and that's then rebirth like a phoenix. It into will be this new. It whatever. will be reborn like a Jean Grey, like a Jean Ray, in, uh, in uh, yeah. January. Uh, you know what? What's it called? Ten and X. I, I don't this know time? anymore. Because you okay. said, I don't know. Oh God, I had, yeah, you confused me last week, so now I don't know. I might go with Pleasant Valley Dog Walkers Club again. I'm still going to go with the ten minute daily format. I wasn't confusing you. I was just. I was confused. Who is this? About your intentions, that's all. You may do whatever you want. It's your show. Um, Excelsior. Yeah, and okay. you know what? I, I think uh, the new podcast, I am going to go five days a week instead of seven. I'm going to yeah. take the weekends off, so I apologize for that. <laughs> right. Business hours. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would be a terribly long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to five every day. What, what about, how about just a constant live stream in front of my TV? Yeah. <laughs> That'd work. And then a webcam, and then we can control a little robot arm. No! That, uh, whacks you in the face. Ow. <laughs> you just see, yeah, you're just sitting there playing, ow. Oh, wait, ow. I mean, ouch. Ow. Ouch. There we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> these guys are bad if they ever punch you. And that little clip of Mega Man music in the background would also fit. Uh, <laughs> Alex, you're also uh, taking a break, so this is the last show... That I'll be doing with you, regular show that is for a few weeks. That's right. You're going to go to America and see, uh, you know, spend the holidays with your family, the Fratellis. That's and, right. You know, um, this will come out on the 23rd. Then we've got uh, we've got some fantastic, a couple of fantastic filler episodes. Look forward to that. Yes. And then so I think Merry we're going to be back to you. proper on the 13th. January 13th is our next proper episode. Sure, whatever. But we're not leaving you hanging. Check the feed. There will be episodes of... What, what could it be? I don't even know. <laughs> well, we sort of know. What, okay, one of them is just me counting my money. <laughs> okay, let me throw that out there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, you are now a bum. <laughs> Never mind. I'm now a bum. Counting What's all that donation money. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And to all our listeners, folks. Merry Christmas. I'm happy holidays. Happy New Year. Whatever you do. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy. What else is there? I, um. Life Day. Happy Life Day. Uh -huh. Happy Earth Day. Happy Birthday. If today's your birthday, in fact. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, this drops on the Emperor's birthday. Uh, that's so. So uh, happy birthday, Steve. <laughs> is that? Is that right? Steve Hirohito. <laughs> Steve is someone. All right. Oh, God. I'm losing it. Uh, all right. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you very much, folks. Yes, and Alex, thank you, as always. Um, everybody else, keep your nose clean, and we'll see you next week. Gold subscribers, stick around to the show. Got a holiday goiter? We have 10 tips to manage your proverbial Christmas tree bulb.
let's fill in each other's gaps, right?